I want to talk about the lab this week. So this week we're going to have a worksheet to do. Um, really, it's a review of data analysis. Uh, but let, let's talk a little bit about how the lab will work this semester. In fact, let me uh, show you the syllabus so you can see it better. Hold on a second. Oops, okay. So we're going to meet um, online seven times and in person eight times this semester. And I've listed the days we're going to uh, meet in person on the syllabus where it says uh, the last line in class time. And I've also written it on the board, so let me show you the board. Okay, so um, we're going to meet in person on these days. All the other days, we're going to meet uh, online, like, like we are right now. On the days we are in person, um, five of those days, I will hold the exam. And then uh, the other days, we'll do experiments. There's only three of them where I'm going to use for the experiments. It's because of the lab equipment is expensive. And the stuff I was using last semester uh, for those labs did not work out very well. Now, on the days where I'm in person, I'm also obligated to be available to you to answer questions on your labs. And so, and I put this schedule uh, on Canvas. These are the times when I have open lab on that Friday. So we meet at 9.30, but if you come before 9.30, or at 12.30 or 3.30, you can come and ask me questions about the lab that you're doing, okay? Again, this is for in-person days, the schedule. Now, for the other days, where we, we're gonna be meeting um, online, I'm gonna try to come as, uh, every Monday to campus. I'll either come after I do the lecture at 9.30 or I'll do the lecture on campus at 9.30 and then I'll just sit, I'll be there the rest of the day. I have a meeting at 3.30 on campus, so um, I'd be available between 11 and 3.30 uh, on those days, okay? And then you just need to come in. Now, when you come into the building, there's a protocol. Um, I think uh, you, videos have been sent to you regarding how to come into a building. Number one, you have to basically do a health screening. So you should have the Sierra College app on your phone and do the health screening on your phone. And if everything goes okay, you'll get the green star. And then when you come in, you show me the green star and it'll, you'll be okay to stay in. If you don't get the green star, I have to report. I have to actually report you to uh, our contact tracers. Okay. Secondly, when you're in the classroom, we all have to wear masks and the mask has to cover our nose and our chin. It's going to be important for you in these days. Okay. You can't be in that room taking the exam if you don't have the mask on. Any questions on that or concerns? Okay, and I don't know how many of you actually have an on-ground class this semester. I know, I know there's a few more this semester. Um, how are we going to do the, uh, the lab? So, I do things a little bit differently with the labs. Um, if we look at the syllabus real quick. I have the lab schedule. So the review of significant figures that we're going to do is uh, an assignment you're going to type up and turn in. It's a review assignment. I mean, you've had 205 here, so a lot of the stuff that you'll see there you've done in 205. Just want to make sure everybody understands how to analyze data. 
Uh, the only part that's missing in the assignment is making graphs. Um, next week, I'm going to talk to you about the, our first two labs. In fact, I, I've divided the, the next topic, our next lab, into two different labs. Uh, one of them, you're going to build your own equipment. Now, you can build the equipment with, actually, you will build the equipment with stuff you have at home. You're going to need paper plates, a jar or a glass. Uh, aluminum foil. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna build testing equipment to see if something is charged, or you're gonna build something that that actually charges up. Okay, it's pretty easy to build, but you'll find that you you're gonna have a little bit of a hard time getting it to work. And you'll have one week to do build that equipment. You're gonna make a video of your equipment working. So. Um, the, the worksheet is something you're going, you're going to write up, but then the building, the, the equipment is going to require you to do a video lab report. Then you're going to use that equipment to do something called a properties of charge lab. That lab is also a video lab report. Questions on that? So you're going to be creating videos on your, for your lab this semester, for some of them. Yeah, I do have a good question on that. Sure, go so ahead. So when you say video lab report, we have the video of the, the lab working, right? Do we also have a write-up, or is it just the video? Just the video, no write-up. Oh, okay. Yeah. And in fact, what will happen is everybody will build their own set of equipment uh, for the proper as a charge lab. But then when you actually do the experiment, I'm going to allow you to work in groups. With less videos for me to grade, but that's part of the, part of the reason. But I think you learn more if um, you work in groups. You don't have to. I mean, you don't have to work in groups. I know because of COVID, uh, that's an issue. And I'm going to talk to Tyler about, you know, if you want to do some of that on campus. I, I got to look at the our lab schedule with the other classes. Okay. Uh, then in the middle of September, we're doing a multimeter skills demo. So. You're going to uh, show us, show me that you learn that, that you need that you can use a multimeter. A multimeter is a device to measure voltage, current, resistance. It's a, a very important tool in the um, testing of circuits. Those of you who are going to become electrical engineers, you're going to you're going to be experts on the uh, multimeter. Um, so that's a, actually a video. You're going to create a video basically showing me that you know how to use the multimeter. So already there's three videos that you have to do. It's not until we get to the Ohm's Law Lab that you will write a formal lab report. Okay. So your first formal lab report won't be due until the 29th of October. Okay, and you're going to turn in a hard copy. You're not submitting it to Canvas. I scheduled the due dates for the um, written labs so that you will turn them in in person. And you'll notice on Canvas, you can't submit those. You can't submit them on Canvas. Okay, the only thing you can uh, submit on Canvas are the videos and the worksheet. That's it. Questions on that schedule? So you'll see it's basically three labs that are videos and four labs that are formal reports. We're really doing four formal reports the entire semester. Okay, there's one for, there's, uh, one for the motor lab. It's, it's basically you got to answer a couple questions. Okay, you're going to build a motor this semester and we're going to test it. And we're going to allow you to use the equipment on campus to test it. It's way better than doing it at home. It's been... When, when I've done the, have you guys build a motor online, it's been very difficult for you and me. Um, so we're going to leave testing equipment in our lab on campus so you can test things out and then demonstrate the, the uh, equipment. Okay. So questions or concerns?
Okay, so um, whether you're, we're doing a lab report or a worksheet or a video, whatever you turn in, whatever assignments you turn in, they're either going to be worth 20 points, 25 points, 30 points, or 40 points. Uh, so this is the worksheet. So I have the worksheet is worth 25 points. Um, this one is the second to last lab we do this semester. That one's worth 30. Um, most of the written labs are worth 40, including uh, one of the video labs. Any lab where you have to demonstrate something to me that's worth 20 points. You know, demonstrate that you know what you're doing. Okay. And so I grade based on, so I, I, I grade based on a percentage. 90% and above is an A, 80% above is a B, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And I'm very, and a stickler on grading on sig fig. So those, for those form, four formal lab reports, I'm going to be a stickler on grading on sig figs, proper air analysis, and all that stuff. Okay. So there's probably going to be a fairly big gap between the last lab you did in 205 and the first lab you do a write-up in, in this course. That's one of the reasons why I want to do the review sheet. Okay. Let me continue. So this lab is a little bit different. It's more of a hybrid lab. Because um, I'm going to be available. I'm, I'm going to have a greater availability with you. Um, Tyler will be on campus. And so you can probably walk into the building as long as you're masked up and you're... Uh, You're, you're okay to be in the building. You pass the screening. You can go ask Tyler questions, but I would recommend that you email Tyler Hickox first if you have questions and you want to ask him questions in person. Okay. And I'll, and I'll give you his email address in a second. All right. Um, the lab guidelines, I'm not going to go through the lab guidelines, but the lab guidelines are pretty much like Last semester he had a 205. So Tyler, Tyler's email is this. Actually, I'll email you his, his I don't want to put this up here because it's on, this video is going to be on YouTube. Okay, I'll, I'll email you uh, his email. I'll, I'll send you his email address if you need to contact him. Okay. Questions or concerns? So, Professor? Yeah. Um, basically, we'll have like we'll do the lab report and everything, um, print it out, and then the next time we have to be at campus is the due date. For, yeah. Like, that, so we show up for our exam and kind of turn in the lab report and then do the exam. Correct. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's not going to be the case every single time. I mean. Actually, I don't know if you, if you, if you read carefully the syllabus, um, there will be a lab due on this date, but because there's an exam at this date, I give you until Monday to turn in the hard copy, so, but that means you still have to come to campus to, to turn it in. If you look in the syllabus, if a due date for the lab falls on the same date as the exam, I let you turn it in the next class period. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? Um, for the labs and where we take our tests in general, uh, do you, did you already, uh, did you already explain us where we'll be going on campus for that? To take Is a test? Syllabus? Yeah. Uh, so if you look on the, on the syllabus and the Sierra College schedule, it says to go to room S102. So, so I don't know how many of you guys, because uh, we've been online so long, have never been on campus. Uh, it's, in, it's Sewell Hall, room S102. I actually don't know how many of you folks have actually seen each other before. Um, but our lab is going to at least allow us to get to know each other. 
Um, do you, you all know where Sewell Hall is? It, it's the same classroom that you taught Physics A in, because I took you, uh, I had you for Physics A like a couple semesters ago in Sewell Hall. It's the same classroom? Um, I thought I taught your class in S111. Oh, maybe it was. I know but, it's in the same building. At least. Same building, though. Yeah, yeah. It's the same building. Okay. So, yeah, these in-person meetings will be in this room. It's a room that, that seats 40 students, so there's only going to be 16 of you in there, so we can spread out. You can make yourself comfortable. Um, so we, you will be socially distanced, even though suppose we don't need to be, but I prefer that we do that especially for the exam. Um, and it, uh, it'll be a quiet room because there's not that many people on campus. Other questions? All right. So let me talk about... Um, oh. Let me remind you some things. Um, there's, in the lab, in your Canvas shell for the lab, there are modules, and there are some things for you to read. And again, some of this is review, but I would, you know, go through some of this. In fact, I think one of the documents, if you had 205 with Shakal, one, uh, one or two of the documents are really her documents. Okay, so I'm using them as a, uh, for, for, as a review for you, so, and as a reference for you. So uh, go through and read the material uh, for week one module. Um, I'm, if you haven't received a lab kit, or I, I, let me rephrase that. If you haven't come to campus to pick up a lab kit, um, you need to make arrangements to come on campus to pick up the lab kit. Because Friday, next Friday, you're going to be building something for me. And the testing equipment is in the lab kit. Now, it's true that you can get the testing equipment from like somewhere like uh, Lowe's, because really the testing equipment is a PVC tube and some uh, uh, fur. You need something, you need some fur, because we're gonna be electric, electric, uh, um, charging things up electrically, okay? The kit has materials for charging things up, uh, a PVC, a short PVC rod, and um, some fur in it, okay? So I, I, I really prefer that you get the lab kits as soon as you can, okay? Because otherwise, that indicates to me you're not interested in being in the class. Now, um, last thing before I forget, when, we do the, when you do the video labs, you have two options. Well, you probably have two more. You have more than two options, but you have two basic options, really, to upload your videos, okay? Or to give me your videos. Don't upload your videos to Canvas, okay? Don't email me the videos. And I'll remind you this next week. I, I, I had one student... The first time I did this, I had a student email me a three gigabyte file. It takes 45 minutes to download. Okay. So I don't want to spend 45 minutes downloading. So what I want you to do is you can, you, there's a button for Canvas Studio. You can actually create a video in Canvas Studio or you create your video and upload it to YouTube. If you upload it to YouTube, and this is up to you. You can make your video private. When you upload it, it'll ask you, do you want to be public, private? And there's the third choice. Um, you make it private, send me the link, and I'll watch the video. So all you got to do is put the, put the link in, uh, when you, when you uh, upload the document, just put a Word document with the link on it, and that's it. Okay. I'm not going to look at videos that you email to me, all right, because I have to download them. It takes forever, and then I, my computer gets full of, full of videos. So either use YouTube, and you don't have to use YouTube. You can use 
There's other systems, but YouTube is like free for what, what you need to make. And the videos, like for the lab you're gonna be doing next week, probably is gonna be two minutes or less. Okay? So you want to create, yeah, you, have to, you want to create your own YouTube channel. You can make it private and then put your videos there. Or you can use Canvas Studio to make your videos. And, that, and this has worked okay the last couple of semesters, having students use YouTube, okay? But make, make sure, you know, if you want anybody else to see it, see your video, uh, make it private and then just send me the link. Questions on that? Okay. I do have, I, 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 before I forget, I keep forgetting little things, but I do have a late lab policy it's described in the syllabus. It's 15% off per day. It's late till the end of the semester. Okay. And I don't drop lab scores. You're only, you're only turning in like 10 things a semester, 10 or 11 things a semester, so I'm not gonna drop any lab scores. Okay, so if you don't have any questions, I wanna show you the worksheet. It's on Canvas. You're gonna type it up like you, you did the lab reports in Physics uh, 205. Let me switch. You can all see that, okay. So, yeah. okay. So basically, you're just gonna fill out this document, but you're gonna type it up. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed some of the things in the chat. Um, yeah, regarding the YouTube video, one is called Unlisted. Okay, so yeah, you can make your video unlisted on, on YouTube. Sorry, I missed those things in the chat. Um, this, so the first part is basically, uh, uh, basically a review on sig figs. I'm going I'm to go through some, some of this stuff in a minute. Uh, the second part, again, you're going to type everything up. Um, Again, working with scientific notation. Then calculating the average and uncertainty. The second part is air propagation, because you will be doing air propagation in this course. You're not gonna get away from that. And by the way, some of these are related to some of the labs you did last semester, maybe. And then the last one is on interpreting experimental results. So this has to be typed up. And for part two, make sure you show your work and simplify the answer. So you're going to be using math type or whatever equation editor you used last semester. Okay, so this will be due next week. So if we go to Canvas, let me go to Canvas real quick. Okay, I'll switch windows in a second. My computer is slow.
So um, you're just going to upload your uh, document here on Canvas, okay? I'm not, in, I'm not in the student view. If you were in the student view, there'd be a button for uploading the Word document. And then what I'll do is I'll grade it. This, this assignment I can grade fairly quickly. The labs, uh, I, it takes me a long time to grade in, uh, when it's on Canvas. That's why I'm having you turn it in hard copies. Okay? All right, just give me a second here and switch windows. So this lab is due next Friday, right? Yeah, let me, I want to double check what I put for the day. Sometimes I mess up. It's due, so yeah, Friday, September 3rd. In fact, what I might do, um, no, it's fine. It's, it's due next Friday, September 3rd, because that'll be like the first thing you're turning in, right, this semester. Because your first homework, your first web assignment is not due till the, the Wednesday of the following week. So, yeah, September 3rd. I'll try to grade that as soon as I can. Thank you. By the way, it's due by 11.59 p.m. Okay. So let me review uh, real quickly the rules for sig figs. I'm not going to talk about the zeros and all that stuff. I'm just going to talk about the, the basic things. And there's a review sheet on, again, on, in module one on the rules for sig figs. So suppose I have some object, and I measure its dimensions as this. Okay, first of all, what's wrong with that? It has a different number of sig figs. If you're using the same instrument, it should go to the same decimal place. Right. I mean, so anyway, you're right. So really, if I were, if you're going to make the measurement, I should be able to use the same, I, I should have the same precision for both measurements. Okay. You're right. There's no units. Okay. I'll do this. U for units. Okay. But you're right. That's a good point. All right, um, but for our purposes, I'm going to leave them like this. Now, is, are there situations where you might need to make the same type of measurement and use, uh, have different sig figs? And the answer is yes. So imagine this sheet of paper. You can easily measure the length and the width. What about the thickness? Right. You can measure the length and the width with the, with the ruler or vernier caliper, but the thickness, you need something called a micrometer. You need a different tool. So the precision will be different, and the six figs will be different because you have to use a different tool. But if you don't have to use a different tool to make the measurement, then you should use the same, exact same tool to make the measurement. Okay? And that's what I wanted to bring up. Now, I want to calculate the area of this thing. And the, if you do this on your calculator, the calculator does not know the rules for sig figs. Excel does not know the, words, the rules for sig figs either. Okay. But you know that when I do the multiplication, I'm only going to keep three, des three sig figs, right? Why do I keep that? Well, what's the rationale behind that? So 
So let me let me give you my rationale for that because I like uncertainty in the. Go ahead. Uh, uncertainty in the the different calculations. Yeah. Well, if I put the next digit here, let's say I put the next digit here. Remember, this is what I've calculated. These are what I've measured. If I put the next digit, it's saying that I have more confidence in what I calculated than what I measured. Doesn't it? That sh that's not the case. That shouldn't, that, that shouldn't happen. It's, there are exceptions, I will tell you that. But that really shouldn't happen. I should not, this number I can't trust, I shouldn't trust this more than this one. Because this is calculated, that's measured. Does that make sense? So the rules for multiplication and division, you keep least number of sig figs. Okay? So it's the same rule for division. Now, what if I were going to add these two numbers? Or actually, what if I were going to subtract these two numbers? If I subtract them, I get... How's that? There's a problem with that, right? And the reason why there's a problem is because I'm saying that I trust this calculated value more than what I measured. I can't do that. Uh, your screen's uh, frozen, Professor. Oh, my screen frozen? I don't know why Monday, Wednesday, Friday is bad. Tuesday, Thursday is fine. I don't understand. How about now? Uh, yeah, that's good. Okay, I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, it just changed. Okay. Um, at least I didn't have to restart the video because every time I have to restart the video, I have to, I have to merge videos together. Um, so I subtract these two, and I get this value. This is wrong because I'm saying that I trust this, what I calculated, more than what I measured. So I got to round this off, but when I round this out, there's a problem. This is a five. Five is exactly halfway between one and nine. What do I do with this five? How am I going to round this? Well, the rule we're going to use in our class, I think, well, the rule that we use in our department is you round to the nearest even. So if this is a five, you round to the nearest even. The nearest even is a two because it's already even. So I, I, should, write the, I should write my answer this way. So the question is, why do I round it to the nearest even? As opposed to a lot of people in other fields just say you just round it up. Why do I do that? Significant yeah, that was, figure, go ahead. I was gonna say that was, something I was very confused about when I learned about it with Aviva. Um, it, if you always round up, it skews your results upwards. Like I want Correct. That. You're right. It, it skews your results upward. What we're doing is the sig figs are used to kind of assess random errors, which means sometimes the value is going to be smaller than what it should be. Sometimes the value is going to be bigger than what it should be. If you always round up, you're skewing it in one direction. You're basically changing what's called a random error into a systematic error. Now, whether you round to the nearest even or not, it doesn't matter, but we've chosen the convention in our department to round to the nearest even. You can always choose the convention to round to the nearest odd. It's just a convention. And part, of, and part of the reason we have conventions is because the rules for sig figs aren't really rigorous. Okay? They don't always work. 
So when you add or subtract, you go by the least number of decimal places. So let me give you another example. And I'm going to add these two numbers together. Okay. I don't go by least I don't go by sig figs because otherwise my final answer would be one sig fig. But I go by decimal places. This number's oops. This number is to the 10th place, this number is to the 10th place, this number is to the 10th place. They're all measured to the 10th place. So I go by the least number of decimal places, which is the 10th place. So when you do that, you can either gain sig figs or you can lose sig figs. Because if you take 1000.0 and subtract 999.9, .9, then you get 0 0.1. Still, everything's too the tenth place. Um, you've been freezing intermittent, intermittently, but it's been fixing itself. I think you're frozen for good this time. Okay. Oh, you just jumped. <laughs> All right. I apologize. Yeah, I'm pretty frozen there. Can you hear me though? Yeah, fine. Okay, so the video's frozen, but you can hear me. That's very strange. You do get a robotic tone in your voice. Um, Every once in a while, though, so. Okay, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm. Let me. I'm gonna try to uh, lecture on campus Monday, because this this is not gonna work out very well. Um, my video that I have, my other video that I'm recording, that one's not gonna be jumpy. But it's gonna take me a while to upload that to YouTube. So now I disappeared, didn't I? Okay, so it looks like I'm back for now. Yeah. Just tell me when it completely stops and then, uh, it just seems like it's jumpy. Is my voice uh, messed up still? Your voice is, is fine right now. Um, okay. We would just, the image would freeze for maybe 10 seconds or so before catching. Okay, so are we okay so far with the rules for sig figs? Okay. Um, what about multiple operations? Um, let me get an example. Here. How many sig figs in the counting number? It's precise. Are... Yeah, so you, well, as many as you need, right? Infinite. I'm going to take an average of four values. When I add those all up, oh, by the way, four is a counting number, okay? But these are not. If I use the rules for sig figs, what should the numerator end up being? Does that make sense? I'm, I'm strictly using the rules for sig figs. And so when I add those all up, I get 10.00. I divide by 4, following the rules for sig figs. Now, different faculty will say different things about how to calculate this. And the reason why is because 
The rules for sig figs don't work in every case. Have you, has anybody had a, a faculty me, a member tell them you should just keep it to the uh, 100th place? Because I know there's faculty members say, oh, well, because these are to the 100th place, then your final answer has got to be in the 100th place. Then my question would be, then why do you measure something over and over again? Don't, isn't the purpose of measuring something over and over again to get more precision? So that's why I'm following the rules for sig, sig figs strictly here. But really, what's the better way of determining whether I stay here or here? What's the better way? You learned it in 205. What do you calculate? Calculate the uh, uncertainty. Yes. This is based on the theory of errors. This is rigorous. This is what always will work. So, if the uncertainty was 0.03, then, then all I can say is 2.50 plus or minus 0 0.03. If the uncertainty, and I, I know units, sorry. Okay, if the uncertainty was 0 0.003 units, then I will quote it to the thousandth place. So really, this is dictated by the uncertainty. The rules for sig figs are kind of ambiguous in a problem like this. But if I were to follow it strictly, I would write it as 2.500 units. Okay. Same thing is uh, if I here's another interesting one. Um, here. And 100% is a counting number. What is that going to give me? The rules for sig figs tell me when I subtract I got to keep this to the 10th place. What's the value of the 10th place? It's zero. This answer is zero. So I have zero percent. Doesn't mean that, I, that the two values match. It only means that the two values match to two, de to, the two, values match to two decimal places. Okay. All right. So, do you all remember how to calculate the uncertainty? Let me review that real quick. And the standard deviation. The handouts that I have in the module Go, it goes through some of this. I'm not going to really spend time going through all the, reviewing all the details about where these come from. So the uh, standard deviation denoted by sigma is sigma sub x equals the square root of 1 over n minus 1 times the sum of x sub i minus x average squared from i equals 1 to n. I think you've done that before. And then the uncertainty.
will denote it as delta x where n is the number, total number of measurements you made. By the way, when we get to the last lab in the semester, I'm going to expect you to do these in, uh, um, in Excel because you're going to have hundreds of calculations to do. And really what I'm going to have you do is create an Excel spreadsheet to do the calculations. Okay, and those of you at Physics A with me have done that in my Physics A class. Okay. And you guys are all familiar with this, right? You've done this before, so... I'm not going to go through it too much. And then the next one is suppose we, we measured X. We measured th uh, three quantities. We measured X. We measured physical quantity Y. And we measure physical quantity Z. We know X with its uncertainty. We know Y with its uncertainty. And we know Z along with its uncertainty. I want to calculate something based on these measurements. Right, this could be length, width, and height. And I want to calculate volume. I want to calculate something that depends on these measurements. How do I figure out delta A? What's delta A? This is where the air propagation comes in. Okay. If A was dependent on four variables, you would have four terms like this. If A only depended on two variables, then you would only have two terms like this. And again, you've done this last semester, right? Any questions or concerns on how to do these calculations? As far as the work goes, when we're supposed to show our work on this section, um, how much work do you want to see? Well, um, let me go to the let me go to that section. I mean, some of these are pretty easy to do. Yeah. Um, Basically, you want to show me that you know what you're doing. I think the yeah. last one's probably going to, you're going to show the most amount of work. Basically, you know, take, uh, taking this, so I would, I would do this like for the first one. The first one's only one variable. Oh, I got to just, hold on a second. Uh, let me do. Let me not do that one. Let me do the. Let me do the second one. Then I would write down delta z. So that you, so that uh, you you want to show me that you know what you're doing. You want to take the derivative. Sorry, it's hard to write over here like this. And then really the next step is just put the final answer in. Okay. 
Okay. So if you show me that you, you can do this, I mean, I don't, I don't need anything else after. I know you know how to take a derivative. I just want to make sure you can, you're applying the equation properly, okay? Is that okay? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, I'm also going to have you calculate something that relative uncertainty. So which means it's this thing divided by A. Or divided by Z. Okay. But then simplify because you get a real simple equation. Okay. And the reason why uh, I have you do the relative uncertainty is, be is, is because you can see which measurement produces the largest error in, in your experiment. When I grade your labs, the first thing I do is look at which term dominates. So I actually, I actually calculate the relative error. So if one term is 10 times bigger, one error is 10 times bigger than the other one, I can figure out right away what your error should be. So that actually allows me to grade faster. Okay. So I can estimate the error very quickly. If, if, if one of these terms is way bigger than the other one, I can figure out the error. And, and I'll give you the answer to this one because this one's easy. It'll look like this. Okay. That's what the answer will look like. When you simplify it. So that's the relative error. And if you multiply by 100%, it, it basically gives you a percent uncertainty. Questions on that? So that's something we're expected to do on the, the worksheet? Yes. On this worksheet, okay. you're doing both the uncertainty and the relative uncertainty. And the, the relative uncertainty is pretty easy to calculate. I mean, it's, I mean, for that one, it's pretty easy. The last one is not. And you'll see a lot of them have very similar forms. Okay. And, and, and again, this tells you right away, if you, if you write that out, it'll tell, it'll, you can figure out right away which measurement produces the, the biggest issues with your lab. So if this ratio is way bigger than this ratio, that means that whatever X is, is causing the most problems. So if this, if this gives you a 10% error and this gives you 1% error, for example, when I'm grading, then I know your error is going to be 10%. So if I look at your value, if I look at delta A, if it's 10% of A, then I kind of I, I go on to, to the next lab. Okay, that's how I grade them. I, I, what I do is I compare uh, your uncertainty to A. And does it match with the one that, with the term that dominates, the percent error of the term that dominates? That's how I grade. Because otherwise I have to go through everybody's calculations. That'll take me forever. So when they see a problem, then with, where it doesn't match, then I, then I look more closely at what the student did. Okay. And that's a good thing for you to do because then you can tell if you made a mistake or not. Okay. And feel free to ask me questions via email or Monday. You can ask me questions. You can get started on this right away. I mean, I'll be, I'll be on campus Monday. You can come by. Okay, so the last part of the assignment is on interpreting uh, experimental results and, and errors. What's the difference between precision and accuracy?
Yeah, isn't precision when like all your answers will be really close to one another, but then accurate is when all your answers are close to the to your goal. The clo- the close to an accepted value, right? Yeah, yeah accuracy ref- reflects um, how close you are to an accepted value. Precision represents consistency. What's the difference between random and systematic errors? Uh, systematic is when like all of your data is skewed in one direction, either like above or below the, the, the target, and random will be more like um, all over the place, right? Yes. There's also something called personal error. That means you screwed up. And where your job is to eliminate those, right? Especially since you, so you kind of have like an open lab, etc. I, I really, it bugs me when somebody says, oh, I probably made a mistake. If you think you made a mistake, uh, email me ahead of time, okay? Uh, the other one that's bad that all physicists hate is human error. What does human error mean? To me, it's a cop-out because the student doesn't know what the sources of error are. They just ter- write that in because a- human error is ambiguous. If you're saying that I'm judging the value on the ruler with my eyes, I call that a random error. Okay? Because one person will read something that's too big, another person will read something that's too small. So never, ever, ever use the term human error. It's an automatic deduction in a lab report. Okay? So random errors are indicative really of how precise your measurements are. Systematic errors are indicative of one, how precise your measurements are, and two, how accurate your measurements are. Okay. So generally, so if you, if you make a measurement, let's say you measure, uh, let's say you measure the density of water. I actually don't know the exact value because it's its value slightly changes depending on temperature. But let's say that the density of water accepted is 1.000 grams per cubic centimeter. And what you got Now, first of all, the question I can ask is, does, does your value agree with the accepted value? Do they agree? So if I plot it, this is where the density of water is. This is your value with the, with the error bar on it. Does this overlap that value of 1.000? Nope. So they don't agree. If this error bar doesn't uh, inc- incorporate the actual accepted value, these don't agree. So what does that tell me? Well, if, if this, in our course, because we haven't learned how to do, uh, estimate accuracy, we're, this number is just reflective of random errors, correct? I mean, what you did in 205, this number that you came up with was only reflected of random errors, how good your instrumentation was. If this value 
If this number is outside this range, that means that your random errors are, there must be there's some other sort of error, which is a systematic error. It means there's a systematic error here that's making your value too low. All your measurements are consistently low. There's probably some systematic error that's causing this. I'm not saying it is, I'm just saying it's, so this is indicative of systematic error. Okay? So if your value is outside the range of the accepted value, most likely that's because of some systematic error that's not being accounted for. Like there's impurities in the water, for example, that you didn't account for when you did the experiment. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to ask you uh, over and over the semester, do two values agree? And you don't want to say, well, they look pretty close. You want to be more objective. You don't want to be subjective. This is physics. This is not, this is not like you're, you know, a uh, uh, subjective course. I don't want to put down any other field. So um, this, is a, this is a field that's very subjective. I'm sorry, objective. God, I can't. Sorry. This is a field that's very objective. Okay? You don't want to be subjective here. So when somebody asks if the two values agree, you have a reason to say why they don't agree because this value lies outside the range of 0.96 plus or minus 0.01. Okay, now if this were 0 0.04, then those two values would agree. Because then my error bar is bigger, and that value incorporates it. That's how you determine whether two values agree or not. You want to see if this range of values agrees with the accepted value. When you make a measurement, you are actually getting a range of values, not a single value. Because your measurement's not perfect. And so the last part has you answer some questions regarding this issue. Um, th thoughts regarding how to express values. Let's, let's say you measure something. Give a, a, you know, how are you going to express whatever the measured quantity is? I would write it like this. So here's the ways you should express things. I mean, you could do this. These are, these are okay, this is more work. If you want to do less work, you would write it that way. Okay, here's another one. Um, let me write this one down. What's wrong with writing it this way? Why is it writing it this way better than this way? Is it just harder to digest? You're right. I mean, this tells me right away the errors are a hundredth place. I mean, I have, to, I have to sit there and think about and, and, and I have to think about this. I mean, it's, I've seen students do this with, you know, many more decimal places on here and here. And it's just annoying. You really should write the values like this. Okay. Or some students do this.
That's harder to digest too. Isn't it easier to understand it this way? Yeah, temporarily froze again, but we can let you know once I froze again. I'm frozen. Okay. All right. So what I, I'll tell you what I wrote down. I wrote down 7.52 times 10 to the minus 3 plus or minus 2 times 10 to the minus 5. If you write yeah. it that way, it's just hard to understand the nature, the, the, how big the error is. So that first way I showed you is probably the way you want to do it. Okay, I'm not on the board right now. I'm just sitting down because we're frozen. Okay, I guess I'm not frozen anymore. Yeah, so, it just popped up. So you see that last value that I wrote down? That's a very inconvenient way of writing it. Okay. And if I'm not frozen, a couple, uh, another, oh yeah, by the way, on Canvas, go to the announcements. I have on Canvas my pet peeves when it comes to lab reports. Okay? So they keep getting frozen. I'm just going to tell you, read the pet, my pet peeves. What them has to do with how you write numbers exponential? Write them, since you can use superscripts and subscripts in Word, when you write 10 to the minus 5, write it as a superscript or subscript. Okay? Do you have any questions? So right now I'm just sitting down because I'm frozen again. Any questions or concerns? So um, I'll be on campus Monday. So um, if you have questions, you can, you can stop by if you want. Okay, I'll be on campus probably, I mean, I'm gonna try to get to campus, I'm gonna probably try to teach the class from campus because I've never had these issues as bad as I've had with your group. Tuesday was perfect. Oh, I had a question about your Tuesday lectures. Is that a, uh, a three hour lecture or? A That's a three hour three? lecture. And that lecture okay. is on Canvas. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, that lecture that I did on Tuesday is on YouTube. Okay, so I saw a longer length video on your YouTube channel. Um, would the Tuesday lecture cover what we cover in Mondays and Wednesdays? Yes. And combined into one? Okay. It was, it's nice the way it's the, the, the schedule set up. So basically, yeah. Uh, although I got a little bit further with them. I did one more. I, one, there's one example I didn't do with you guys that I did with them. I got to do that Monday. So you can watch that video if you want. By the way, the other thing too is the Tuesday lecture, I actually have to split up the video into two parts. Because mm -hmm. otherwise it's, it's a 25 gigabyte file. Okay. okay, so you'll see it'll say part one and part two. Uh, where do you submit the sig fig? It's, it's on Canvas. So you go to the assignment on Canvas and upload it, just like just like you would you did the labs last semester, I think. It's uploaded on the Canvas under that assignment. Okay, Matt, so there's, the, the, there's several assignments where you can upload. The video assignments, you're going to upload links. Okay, but uh, the labs at the end of the semester, you're going to turn in hard copies. Other questions? Uh, I could be wrong, but I think what Matthew is saying is that it, it's not like an assignment. It's just the link to the, um, to the actual, like, um, Word doc, but there isn't a place to submit it yet. Oh, oh, let me let me go check real quick. Oh yeah, I remember that. It's um, I was able to find on the Canvas calendar. There's actually a link to submit it, but it's not under the modules. Oh, it's not on the modules. No. 
Okay, I got to put that there. That's strange. Okay, I'll put the assignment there. Sorry about that. I'll, I'll add that. Thank you. Like, I'll do it right now. It should be there now. Anything else? Yeah, it's there. Oh, go ahead. I oh, see. It? Okay, okay. All right, so y'all have a good weekend. Thank you. And Bye. I apologize Thanks for the thank you. Okay. Oh, professor. All right, I'll see you Monday. Rick